Okay, great. Thank you, Annie. Um, thank you for coming today, everybody. I'm calling this meeting to order of the Northampton License Commission on Wednesday, September 1st at 4 p.m. Present this afternoon are myself, Natasha Yakovlev, and Helen Kahn. And this meeting is being Zoom recorded. Um, is there anybody here for public comment? And if so, please use your hand raising thing <laughs> on Zoom to let Annie know that you're here for that. None? No, okay, great. So moving on then. Agenda item number three, application for short-term liquor licenses for the Academy of Music Incorporated, 274 Main Street, Sunday, October 10th, 2021, 7 to 11 p.m. Um, for Judy Collins, this is for an all alcohol short license and um, a request for a fee waiver. Is there anybody here yet from the Academy? Hi, I'm here. Hi there, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Good, thanks. Can you just state your name and role for the record? Sure, my name is Melissa Cleary and I'm the theater manager at the Academy of Music. Great. So this is a, one of your typical, typical music event. event. Mm -hmm. Yep, everything's the same. Everything's the same even though nothing's the same, but you're doing it the same as you always did before. <laughs> okay. yeah. um, and I see that all documents are submitted and I don't have any questions about this event. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Helen. I do not either. Okay. Do you want to make a motion? Sure, I'll make a motion to approve the application for short-term liquor license for the Academy of Music as detailed in item three of the agenda. I also make a motion to approve the fee waiver. I second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And just a quick roll, Natasha? Yes. And Helen? Yes. And item number four, also Melissa, request to rescind a previously approved short-term liquor license for the Academy of Music uh, at 274 Main Street. This was for an event that was to take place October 23rd from 7 to 11, the Bax and O'Brien show, and this was for wine and malt. And the show was canceled, so this license needs to be rescinded. Um, I will make a, a, Melissa, did you have anything to say to that or you're good, you're just. No, do you just need me to bring it, bring it over to you, Annie? Annie, do you need her to return it physically? Yeah, yeah so when I when I prepare the new license, I'll let you know and then you can, we can swap. Okay, great, thank you. Um, then I'll make a motion to rescind the previously approved short-term liquor license for the Academy of Music on October 23rd. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And Natasha? Yes. And Helen? Yes. Great. Thank you, Melissa. Did you want to rescind the one, the other one, Annie, or should we do that in October? Which one? The one, the Bax and O'Brien? The other, the, the one for the comedy. Oh, we can save it for October. I guess I didn't realize there, there were that's okay more. just shows are dropping like flies now it's okay okay just if if you yeah if you just send an email um with because I don't know if I have anything for that one okay you send a quick email I can add it to the agenda for October and I mean it's up to the commission but I don't think your presence it would be required yeah okay thanks guys thank you all right thank you Item number five, application for short-term liquor license for the ALS Association, Massachusetts chapter, October 10th, 2021 from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. for the Western Mass Walk to defeat ALS at Look Park in Florence, all alcohol. Is there someone here who represents this event? Yep, I'm representing the event. Hi there, could you state your name and um, role for the record? Yeah, my name is Ashley Carrier and I'm the event manager for the Western Mass Walk. Okay, great. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the event that you're holding? Sure. So we hold an event at Look Park every year. Um, it's our Walk to Defeat ALS. So we have about 400 people who come and participate in our event. It's one of our major fundraising events for the year. And this year we're adding a new component that we're calling an artisan alley featuring local food and drink vendors. 
Um, so we have two local um, drink vendors. One is Artifact Cider and the other is Progression Brewing Company. Okay. And um, so this is a kind of like a morning early afternoon event. What time will this artisan portion of it be starting? Is it starting at 9 a.m.? Well, we have craft people who are coming as well. So I imagine the craft people will come in the morning and then the food and drink people will come later in the day. Okay. So what well, we would typically be wrapping up around 1, 1 p.m. Okay. Okay. And um, in the past when you've done this event, have you had, have you had alcohol served there? I don't no, know. this have will it. be the first time. Mm -hmm. Okay. Helen, do you have some questions? Um, so yeah, so then you have a cordoned off area, I guess, for the, you have some way to control who's, who's coming and buying and drinking alcohol, correct? Right. Yeah, yeah we will. Okay. Um, yeah, no, I do not have other questions. Okay. And will you be set up like on the, on the center green of the park? Is that where the... Yeah, the big ball field area. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Great. I don't have any further questions and it looks like all of the documents have been submitted. Helen, do you want to make a motion? Uh, sure, I'll make a motion to approve the application for the short-term liquor license uh, for the ALS Association Massachusetts chapter as detailed in item five on the agenda. And I will second the motion. On Thank favor. you, Greg. Aye. You're welcome, aye. Natasha? Yes. And Helen? Yes. Have a good event. Thank you. Sure. Feel free to come if you're around. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So moving on to agenda item number six, the application for short-term liquor license for Artifact LLC at 34 North Maple Street in Florence. This is for Saturday, September 25th, 2021 from 4 p.m. to 10 p.m. for the uh, Florence Night Out event in the 30 North Maple Street parking lot for wine and malt. Is somebody here from Artifact? Yep, I'm Jake Mazer. I'm the owner of Artifact. Hi, Jake. How are you? Doing well. Thanks. Um, can you tell us a little bit about your event? Sure. I mean, we're not putting on the Florence Night Out event. I think Donna Bell might be here who's organizing the event. Um, I am here. Hello. Hi, Donna Bell. Well, Donna Bell, do you want to speak to the to the event since you're organizing <laughs> the bigger event? Sure. Um, Yes, yeah, so Florence Night Out is um, a one night art street festival. It is happening Saturday, September 25th from four to 7 p.m. on the street and then seven to eight off the street and then an after party from eight to 10. But um, mainly the streets that will be closed will be North Maple, Maple and Main Street um, from three to 8 p.m. So we are having programming throughout the village um, and we are hoping to have several sort of um, areas where people can um, have food and drink. And um, I see JJ's is here as well. Um, and we are proposing to have an artifact cider garden in the parking lot, just um, a little ways from their actual outdoor um, dining area. Okay. And you have the, um, I assume you have all the permissions in place from the building owner to take space in that way? Yes, yeah, so Bill Arnold has given me verbal um, commitment saying that it is fine. Okay, thank you. Helen, do you have questions or comments? Um, yeah, I do have a question. Hi, Donna Bell. Hi, Jake. Um, Hi. Uh, how, so, so in terms of the applications, and I know that I think we went through this in the past, the individual businesses need to apply for applicant or need to apply for these short term liquor licenses. Is that right, Annie? Or is it the Florence Night Out as a whole is applying for a license for various places to serve? Donabel shaking her head. So I guess it's individual. <laughs> I'm just here to represent Florence Night Out um, to right, sort of right. talk about the festival. And I think Jake is here for his. For, for the actual license for, for Artifact, if I'm correct. That's correct. Right. So Jake, you'll have it, how, what's your plan for the space? Yeah, so we, you know, it's in the same parking lot that we're currently in um, and we have outdoor seating already and we have planters and stanchions and tables and chairs. And so our plan for that night is to not have any outdoor seating at the actual tap room and we're just gonna take our normal setup 
and literally just like move it a hundred yards down the parking lot, um, which is like, you know, six tables and chairs. And then we'll use the same stanchion. So it'll look pretty and nice. It's just going to be in a different area of the parking lot. Yep. Okay. Um, Helen, was your question more in a general sense? Yeah, yeah, I guess in a general sense. And and yeah, yeah. Um, because I, I just know in the past, I think after the fact, we found out things like that various businesses, I believe, were serving outside side without having applied for a license. So I guess I'm just putting that out into the, the atmosphere <laughs> to, to remind people if they're going to be serving during this event that they should come up, apply for that short short term liquor license. Although I'm now, oh no, yeah. It they is September. So they need to be here now. Anyway, <laughs> but I know that's not on the agenda. So, so I'm, just, I'm just saying that, putting it out there. Um, but I have no more questions about this particular license now. Okay, and I do not either. Would you like to make the motion, Helen? Sure, I'll make a motion to approve uh, the short-term liquor license for Artifact LLC 34 North Maple Street in Florence for Florence Night Out as detailed on item six on the agenda. And I will second the motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And Natasha? Yes. And Helen? Yes. Thank you, Jake and Bonabelle. Thanks. Thanks so Hope much. you can make it too. <laughs> right. we'll Fenway that day. Oh, that's okay. We'll yeah. try again next year too. Next year. I, I will be there. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Okay, so item number seven, application for short-term liquor license for Drawing Board Brewing Company, LLC, 36 Main Street in Florence for Saturday, September 18th, 2021 from 1 p.m. to 10 p.m. This is a benefit for the Mike McNeil organization and this application is for wine and malt. Is there someone here from Drawing Board? Yes, Corey Lynch, owner of Drawing Board Brewing Company. Hi, Corey, how are you? Doing well, thanks, how are you? I'm good, thank you. So can you tell us a little bit about this event? Yeah, it'll be very similar to the one that we or the two that we held in August um, out on our back patio only. Um, we'll be having indoor restrooms, um, both or we'll have two controlled access points to control people from coming and going. And we'll be checking IDs at our uh, tap room table. And the benefit is the uh, Mike McNeil organization, which is an organization that raises funds for uh, cancer research. And they uh, will be donating $1 from every draft to that organization. Okay. And how did the other two events go? Uh, they were out, they were very successful. Good, great. Great. Um, all of your documents are submitted, so I don't actually have any questions for you. Do you have anything else, Helen? I do not. All right. Uh, then I will make a motion to approve the application for short-term liquor license as outlined in agenda item number seven. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And Natasha? Yes. And Helen? Yes. Great. Thank you, Corey. Thank you. I'll see you next time. <laughs> see ya. Yeah. Um, item number eight, application for a farm winery liquor license to sell at farmer's markets and agricultural events. This is Hardwick Vineyards and Winery LLC in Hardwick, Mass. For the dates of Friday, September 3rd from 4 to 8 p.m., Saturday, September 4th, 10 to 8 p.m., Sunday, September 5th, 10 to 8 p.m., and Monday, September 6th, 10 to 6 p.m. at the Three County Fairgrounds. And do we still have someone from Hardwick Vineyards? Uh, yes, John Samick, owner, Hardwick Winery. Hi, John, how are you? I'm doing good. Do you want to tell us a little bit about your plans for the Three County Fair? Okay, sure. So uh, we generally attend uh, and have for the last almost 10 years, with the exception of last year, of course. Uh, they put us in Building 3, which is a locked and secured building in the evenings. Um, we set up our tent and tables there, and we offer a, a sample of wine, one-ounce samples, and, and sell bottles to be consumed off-premise. So they're allowed to do a sample and buy the bottle to take home and, and enjoy at home. Okay. Helen, do you have any questions? Uh, no, I don't. Yes, I don't either. All of your paperwork is in order and I remember you from coming to us last year. So um, I'll make the motion then to approve the application for the farm winery liquor license to sell at farmers markets and agricultural events as outlined in agenda number eight. Second. 
All in favor? Aye. Aye. And Natasha? Yes. And Helen? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. See you at the fair. Yes, see you then. Thanks. Item number six, request to rescind a previously approved short-term liquor license for Building 8 Brewery at 320 Riverside Drive. The event would have been Saturday, August 28th, 12 to 8 p.m. for the double dose of doubles. And this was for wine and malt. Is O'Brien here yet? He's not, um, but he, he um, this, this event was canceled. Um, so we just need to rescind it so that we don't need him. What? We don't need him. We don't, although there is an application for a short-term license under new business um, that, but he's not here. So I guess we will just wait. Okay. Um, no. then... For now, we can we can make a motion on this, right? Yeah, on this one, yes. Okay. Do you want to take that one, Helen? Sure. I'll make a motion to rescind the previously approved short-term liquor license for building a brewing, um, as detailed in item nine on the agenda. I will second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And Natasha? Yes. And Helen? Yes. Moving on then to item number 10, public hearing on an application for alteration of premises on an annual all alcohol restaurant license for Notch 8 Incorporated DBA Union Station Tunnel Bar Platform Bar and at 125 A Pleasant Street. Um, and the request is to add 4,180 square feet of outdoor space. Um, so I will make a motion to open the public hearing. Second. And is there anyone here for public comment on this agenda item? Nobody here. Is Jeremiah here? Uh, yep, I am. I'm uh, unable to do video now, but I am here. That's okay. How are you? Good. And yourself? I'm good. Thank you. Um, Annie, do you want to give us the update on that? Yeah, so so Jeremiah, we had um, an internal meeting with the city solicitor and the planning department. Um, and after further review, the city solicitor determined that Union Station does not have control over the premises because there's a lease or excuse me, an easement. Um, and so this the space up by the turnaround is still it's under city control. Um, so in order to amend that, um, you'll have to work with planning and the city council for an amendment to the easement. Okay. Does that make sense, Jeremiah? So we questions, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that the city and easement doesn't come up to there. Um, but yeah, it's the first I heard about it, so. Um, I didn't have any information from from you guys on working with the planning board, so I guess I'll have to go back to the go back to them and uh, and get everything situated as much as possible so that we can get this done. Okay. Yeah, um, the I mean the in the lease there is an amendment with um, a drawing, and it includes the turnaround and the spaces <laughs> up where the the fence is, or excuse me the tent is. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I have to, I have to go back and look at it. I'm sure it's, you know, we can take a look and see what it is. Yeah. Because I know so, with the city lease, everything was, uh, was privy to the 198 uh, parking spaces. So where the tent is, there's no parking spaces whatsoever there. <clears throat> but I'm sure it's still part of that amendment. So I'll have to sit down and talk with them. Yeah. Um. I don't know if you can see my screen. Um. And I'm sorry that I don't have this electronically. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think with the 17 spaces and see how there's no round for the turnaround. Right. That's not necessarily a square location right there. So it's kind of a rudimentary drawing. But so where the parking spaces are over to the left of the building, <clears throat> that's the spe that's the space in question because the tent's not over any parking spots. But I that's not for the liquor license to determine that'll it's obviously not, be with them. Right. Yeah. So, right. so I don't want to waste anybody's time. I'll go back to the city planners and, 
and try to get everything squared away. So okay, they're aware of it. The mayor's aware of it. The city solicitor's aware of it. So um, I can I can follow up with them on I, the city solicitor's out until next week, um, but I know he was working on it. Yeah, like I said, I started this process very early to try to get it done. And if there was any issues for next year so that I can um, just arrange, arrange financially for what's going to happen moving forward. So, right. Okay. Yeah, we'll do that. And, uh, you know, like I said, I, I didn't, I, all I knew was that the meeting was put back on. So I didn't know where, what the determination was. Um, so I didn't talk to the planning board. I know that you guys had a meeting, but I didn't hear anything from there. So. Okay. Then All right. We'll finish it with them. And um, thank you for coming. So I will make a motion then to close the public hearing for agenda item 810. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Have a good day. See you, Jeremiah. Jeremiah. Um, so th that's all set, Annie, that that public, he public hearing is. Yes, but I believe um, you should make a motion to continue it. Okay. To a specific date and time. So should that be the next meeting in October? It will planning board happen between now and then? Probably not. No, because it also it has to go through city council. Okay. And there, there's also other issues with um, bathrooms and mass DOT ADA accessibility. And um, there's also a default on a payment agreement with the city. So there's okay. many issues. And will all of those issues be addressed when the city solicitor has a come or be brought to Jeremiah's attention when when the city solicitor has a conversation with him or planning? Um, the default he has been aware of for years. Um, so that's not new. Okay. Um, but the bathrooms, I can check with the building department about the bathroom issue. Um, and then, but the easement or the amend, if they go through with the amendment to the easement, that would also include the article 97 encroachments. There's two of them. Um, near the platform and the deck. They're both encroaching on parkland. Um, so for purposes, what date should we choose? <laughs> like six months? I mean, yeah, I, um, I'm, and at this point too, it's for outdoor dining is the idea, right? I mean, are we getting into the point? Sounds like we're pushing it potentially to the point where there wouldn't be outdoor dining and it makes me wonder if it's, I mean, he has, goes to next year. He has temporary approval for that space for uh, for COVID purposes, um, and that that ends November first. All city dining or city outdoor dining ends on November first. So um, I guess I would say November, and I can put it on the agenda. If nothing has come of it, then we skip that item. Okay, that works. And do you know the date of our November meeting? What is that? For? Um, I can check. It is November. Third. Okay. Then I will uh, make a motion to continue this agenda item to our November 3rd, 2021 meeting. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And Natasha? Yes. And Helen? Yes. Okay, so that's all set. Yep. Moving on to agenda item 11, request by Blue Paws Incorporated DBA JJ's Tavern, 99 Main Street, Florence, to amend the entertainment license for the purposes of Ock Flober Fest on October, Saturday, October 9th, 2021. And John is here. Hey, John. How are you? Good, how are you? <clears throat> Good, thanks. So do you want to just tell us, I know we're familiar with this event because you do it yearly. Do you want to tell us a little bit about what your plan is for your music? Uh, yeah, the event's the same as it's been in the past, uh, seven years running. Um, yeah, we're just going to have a band set up in the corner as we uh, always do. We're going to change it to the direction to face the building instead of away from the building like we have in the past. Um, and that's really, that's really it. Okay. I don't have any questions. Do you, Helen? Uh, no, I don't. Um, yeah, I'm sorry, I don't yes. know if you said the hours. I'm looking at the email though, where, where you say the hours, right? Oh, that was my question. So um, just- Oh, okay. Helen, you, you there was- yeah. 
And the email what was is like two to six. Two to six. Oh, I missed that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, no, I don't have any questions. Okay. Um, do you want to make the motion or do you want me to make the motion? Um, sure, I'll make a motion to amend. Stop me if I'm doing this incorrectly. <laughs> to amend um, the entertainment license um, for Blue Paws Inc. DBA JJ's Tavern to include um, the allowance of a live band from 2 to 6 p.m. on Saturday, October 2nd, 2021. Ninth. Oh, sorry. Yes. Saturday. Oh, in the email it says second. Saturday, yeah, October, October 9th, 2021. I will second the motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And Helen, or well, yeah, Helen. Yes. <laughs> Natasha. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you, John. Item number 12, hearing on mis misrepresentation of fair wage compliance certifications for liquor license held by Mr. Eric Sewer. Um, I'll make a motion to open the public hearing. Second. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Do we do that for this one? We don't, I don't think. Um, is there any public comment here for the hearing? No public comment. Then Eric, can you State your name for the record and let us know. Um, talk. Let us know what happened with this paperwork. Sure, um, uh, Eric Schur, license holder for uh, Green Room and Iron Horse. Um, uh, I guess I was surprised to um, to see this uh, issue because we hadn't been, nor was our attorney notified of any violation. Um, as you're probably aware, there was an investigation that was occurring and we received no notification beyond what we had submitted to the uh, attorney general's office. So with regard to the fair wage compliance certificate, there was no misrepresentation, uh, at least on our end, as to what uh, we checked the box. I mean, I've been, been signing licenses for going into 27 years and we take it pretty seriously. And that, that box that was checked was checked, um, you know, under pains and penalty of perjury. And we checked it based on what information was available to us at that time. The only thing we had done was submitted based on a, an employee that had been discharged and created an issue. We had submitted what was requested and unbeknownst to us, evidently based on a letter that had been sent in, which was sent into a, an incorrect address and our offices during that time were closed. Our attorneys never even received a copy of, um, of anything from the AG's office. So we have um, submitted um, paperwork through our attorney to the AG's office. And that right now is under, everything is under appeal. Um, and so, you know, we'll keep the, I'm, I'm assuming you'd get updated anyways, but we'll obviously keep the license commission updated as to there's a, an upcoming hearing and we'd keep you updated as to um, what ends up happening with, uh, with the appeal process. In the, in the uh, interim, we've posted, um, as Annie might have mentioned, we've posted a wage bond um, for both entities. And clearly, you know, if we had known um, of the, um, if we had known of the situation, we would have just checked the proper box on this. And, and rather than doing something last minute, we would have prepped for a wage bond during an appeal process long before. My understanding from, from Annie and the license office was that if it were showing as under appeal, that we would not have needed a wage bond for that. We weren't even aware that there was um, that there was a fine associated with that, the first go round. The second go round was all based on um, non-response to the, to the first, what was a $7,500 um, fine, and they hadn't pro provided us with any basis for what that was. So the attorneys are in the middle of it right now, and my guess is, ho I'm hoping that over the next several weeks, that we'll have further guidance on all of that. Okay. That's as much as I can, you know, it's as much as I can tell you. I, I know that there's been a back and forth between um, our attorney's office and the AG's office. And uh, that seems to be quite fluid at the moment. Annie, what were the dates? Can you just remind me it was May, 2020, right? When the paperwork was filled out? Um, the renewal paperwork was filled yeah. out November, 2020, but the, the first citation that is now not under appeal because the appeal period has passed was in May, 2020. Okay. Yeah, the, 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 the actual paperwork from what we have subsequently gotten from them showing uh, it was a, a May of 2020 
date and that license um, fair wage compliance certificate was signed and sent in with our renewal, which was in November. So um, the, the May, um, May um, citation, if you will, wasn't, uh, that, that wasn't received and wasn't, you know, our, our attorneys who were noted as our attorneys with the AG's office hadn't received anything either. Um, so we're not pointing fingers at anybody. Our offices were, our offices were closed, but they sent the, evidently they sent the, um, the paperwork to some other address, nor did our attorney receive a copy or even was aware that that was transpiring. So I think things were in kind of a state of flux in all offices during that period of, of shutdown. And the reason why that wasn't appealed is we never received it. Right. Um, and, and so what has now happened, they've, they've um, in kind of enjoined the two, the, the, the first was being appealed as part of the second and whatever legal paperwork they had to provide for that. But they couldn't appeal something that we had no knowledge of. And so that was part of when I was back and forth with the license commission with Annie about um, having an understanding of what was needed with the wage bond. It was a little surprising only because we hadn't, when we spoke to our attorneys, if we can't, we can't appeal something we have no record of. And that's when that ball started where they, they got in touch with uh, the AG's office to get necessary information. And they've been back and forth now for the last several weeks. We provided a wage bond for reopening to Annie, I think three weeks ago now, maybe, maybe two weeks ago. And, um, and so the green room is reopened and then we're unfortunately dealing with cancellations and issues on the iron horse because of live music right now. But, um, you know, we're hoping that the iron horse uh, reopening will be imminent as well. Helen, do you have questions? Yeah, I'm just, can you go through that again? So the, so the citation was actually in May, 2020. And when you filled out the paperwork in November, 2020, you had, when was it that you learned of it or actually saw the citation? Was it only after you had applied to the license commission? Was uh, it, I no, mean, it wasn't who, who informed you of this? No, it wasn't. When you say applied to the license Pardon. commission, we submitted our Pardon. renewal. Yes, but that was in November. Um, we found out about, I mean, I think it was Annie had mentioned, um, I don't have that date in front of me, but um, she mentioned that uh, we wouldn't have been able to get um, uh, the uh, license to be able to reopen until such time as a wage bond because of the, um, the because it was a $7,500 citation. So that's when we contacted our attorneys to see if they were aware of what that was. And they started digging into to all of that. And I think there was a back and forth from that. I want to say that was maybe two months ago. I'm forgetting the exact date on that, but it was, it was some point this summer. Okay. So you're, so then you're saying you had no knowledge of any of that no, until, had until, of until, until you did the renewal. Yeah, and then we had knowledge of what we appealed, which was the coming, you know, we came to find out, which was the, 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 the fine that they had associated with non-response to the $7,500 um, citation. Yeah, I'm more confused. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry yeah. to confuse you, and I probably shouldn't <laughs> yeah. say anymore because we're in an appeal process right now. But there's not much else I can give you as background, unfortunately. And um, you know, I'm happy to have our attorney submit whatever might be necessary to the license commission once they get through the, you know, this appeal, which might shed better light on on it. And you know, I wish I could tell you more, but we just. We don't have any further. I don't have any further information about about the uh, that seventy five hundred dollars citation, which is, I think, what this is what this is about. As I said, if we had been aware that that was a citation, um, as opposed to just the AG's office looking into something, then I would have clearly checked the proper box on the license and saved myself all the aggravation, of last minute uh, uh, wage bond, and everything else that had to happen. I would have been more than willing to or my attorney would have to shed light on everything so we wouldn't have had to go through all of that. That was not, you know, as a license holder for 26 plus years, that was not a fun process and we'd never had anything that we've had to provide for, you know, a wage bond on something where someone was disputing such a small amount of, of money on something that, you know, was just in our eyes was completely uh, false. So just so I'm clear because there's a lot of moving parts here and a lot of because you you have a lot of establishments so we're talking about the green room and the iron horse and your position is that you were not aware that there was a violation you were not aware Correct. of the citation when you filled out the paperwork for all of your license correct. Establishments. this is planning to green room and the iron horse as you mentioned and that, that's correct 
Yep, just for those two. Yes. Okay. And Annie, do you know how does the Attorney General's office usually communicate with people? Do they send certified mail? Do they? I honestly have no idea. Okay. I do not know. Um, it is typical. I can I can let you know just because we've had the discussion with our attorney's office. So there would be a certified um, letter that would have been sent to the attorney on our behalf as well as a copy to us. Okay, and right, so it would have gone to the attorney too, and none, neither yes. happened. No. Okay. Can I, sorry, can I just follow up? So you're saying you were between May and November, you were in an appeals process, but not for, for this particular citation. Is that what you were saying? Because you were saying no. that there was something you were aware of that you were appealing. I thought that was during that time. We're appealing, we're, it was long after that the license was uh, submitted. The, the, it, it's long after the license uh, renewal application was submitted. Okay. So there, okay. So there was no awareness of any citation between. Not a citation. And the only thing I was aware of is that they were seeking information, which we, you know, brought to our attorney's office. It was copied and sent to the AG's office. And... Mm -hmm. yeah. um, Helen, do you have other questions for Eric before I close the public hearing so we can discuss? Um, I don't think so. No. Okay. Um, then I'll make a motion to close the public hearing. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. So I'm just trying to focus on the two at question here. And I, I, I will, I, Eric's paperwork is always in order in our experience. We haven't had any issues with that. I know that there was one occasion where a license wasn't displayed and that was rectified immediately. Like that's been the gist of it. Um, it's, you know, I don't know how the, to, to, I don't know how the an attorney general's office can issue something and have it not be received by both an attorney and a license holder. So it's surprising to hear that neither entity received these documents, but at the same time, uh, this time frame was super hectic mm -hmm. and I could see how things could potentially fall through a crack, but what are your thoughts? Right. Yeah, no, I agree with everything that you've said. I mean, without us seeing some kind of um, documentation that it was received, we are going by um, Eric's word on this. And so, you know, and we have nothing to contradict it at this point. Okay. And he, yeah. he's appealed everything else right. and we have appealed that. Yeah. Know that also. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, right. So, yeah. So, uh, yeah. So I, I think I'm thinking the way that you are, that, yeah, it was sort of, I guess, beyond his control or beyond his knowledge to know that he was checking the wrong box on that uh, renewal paperwork. Yeah. Um, okay. So, um so is the next part of this discussion about whether there is something to be done? I mean, I think we're both agreeing that um, this was an oversight. Um, it sounds like that could not be helped um, from what we know, um, since we have no other contradicting information. Um, yeah. And the, and the wage bonds have been made for the businesses so that they can reopen and use the license. So I, I, don't, I don't really see that there's anything for us to issue further. Yeah, I agree on that. Okay. Um, Annie, do we need to make a motion about that or is that just the end of our discussion? Um, or is it a motion that there will be no penalty? <laughs> I would say if, I, I, just to be safe, I, I would request that you make a motion to that effect. Okay. Um, I have scribbled so much on my agenda. I can't even find <laughs> you. Okay, here we go. So uh, regarding agenda item number 12, I will make a motion that after discussion, there are no penalties to be levied regarding the misrepresentation of fair wage compliance certifications for liquor licenses held by Mr. Eric Sewer for the Green Room and the Iron Horse. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Mayor Natasha? 
Yes. And Helen? Yes. Thank you. All right. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yep. Uh, moving on, item number 13, discussion and vote to adopt section 7-1 public comment to the rules and regulations of the Northampton License Commission. So, yeah, after our last meeting, we had a discussion, dis discussion about um, how long public comment should be. So I had City Solicitor Seawall draft a... Um, a regulation to put into our rules and regulations. Mm -hmm. um, you should have that. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so you just, um, I guess, hold a discussion and we, you do, you will need to um, vote on how many minutes each person speaks and that how long the public comment period should be limited to. In, okay number of hours. Okay. Um, this will be very helpful to have this added to the rules and regulations, by the way. Mm -hmm. um, Helen, do you have any thoughts? Yeah, I mean, I think it's interesting because I don't think we've ever had an issue with it in my short tenure here. We've never had an issue with public comments. It was just, we had more questions about public hearings, although I know that this doesn't apply to that. So, but I think, yeah, it's good to have it on the books. And um, just at first glance, I mean, I guess I'd throw in there three minutes and I have to say when it said hours, I went, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, never so I'm, I'm going through, I'm like. It was three and a half hours. <laughs> and out of public commentary. <laughs> right. <laughs> so. Yeah, so gosh, I hope not to be um, still on the commission if we <laughs> exceed an hour um but yeah i mean that uh, you know i mean if it's three minutes if we agree to three minutes you know 10 people can talk in 30 minutes i guess we could say one hour and hope that we never get 20 people who want to speak for 30 minutes i mean for three minutes each <laughs> um but uh, yeah um, but i'm open to suggestion i think that's totally reasonable yeah so to say three minutes in one hour yeah, I mean, to say like three minutes and 30 minutes doesn't seem fair just in case <laughs> with that big issue. Right, right. Um, um, yeah. And we need a motion for that, Annie. Are we done discussing that, Helen? Do you have anything else? Yeah, I think so. And then just on the off chance that there's, you know, that 40 people come and want to say something, I guess there could be a motion at that point to extend the public comment period if it came to that. I'm, just I would assume yes that that's an option. Yeah, there's got to be an out to that, right? And or first come first serve. You have to sign sign in, kind of like city council does. Mm -hmm. I, mm -hmm. If I can, I can get clarification on that. But I, I would say that you have the authority to make a motion to temporarily adjust a rule and regulation that you, as a commission, implemented. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Um, okay, so yeah, I'd, I'd go for three minutes, one hour, um, okay. if we agree to that. Um, and so, sorry, you're saying that we should make a motion to... Yes, we absolutely oh. need one to include this in the rules and regulations. Okay. Uh, so I'll make a motion to adopt, I guess. Uh, Sorry, I'm looking at uh, so oh, adopt section 7-1 public comment into the rules and regulations of the Northampton License Commission and um, using the numbers, um, using three minutes and limited to no more than one hour. I second that motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And Natasha? Yes. And Helen? Yes. Great. All right. Uh, item number 14, approval of minutes for August 4th, 2021. Mm -hmm. I will make a motion to approve the minutes for second. Oh, sorry. All, second. <laughs> all in favor. Aye. Aye. And uh, Natasha? Yes. And Helen? Yes. 
Item 15, new business. Has O'Brien popped on yet? He has not. Um, and it, the reason it's under new business, I was actually out of the office Thursday, Friday, Monday, Tuesday. Um, O'Brien had dropped it off at in time for the agenda, but none of my coworkers um, informed me that it was there until oh. I got to work this morning. So... I think the chair couldn't reasonably anticipate it would be discussed, so I added it to new business. Um, I have not spoken to O'Brien about it, um, so I guess it's up to you whether or not you want to discuss and vote on it without him present. Um, the event is at the end of September. Um, yeah, that's all I got. And, yeah. and it's one of his typical event is that is that the same day as Florence Night Out it is oh is that intentional I mean he's not here so I guess he can't answer that but I would be inclined to approve it because we're so familiar with his events yes and he, he uh, runs them so well um and there's no harm in doing that because if the event doesn't happen he can rescind the application just like this other one right Okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you. I mean, yeah, okay. he, he knows what he's doing. So. Yep. Then I'll approve the um, application for a short-term liquor license for Building 8 Brewing, 320 Riverside Drive, Saturday, September 25th, 2021, 11 to 8 p.m. for wine and malt. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And Natasha? Yes. And Helen? Yes. Great. Um, other new business, I do have an item to add to this since we've now added um, a new piece to the rules and regulations about public comment. I would like to discuss potentially adding a section to the rules and regulations about attendance for the chairs or the commission. Sorry, for the chairs and the commission? Or for the chair? For commissioners. Okay. I think it's fair to, to do that. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it should be. I don't know what other communities do, but I think it would be helpful. So Mina, can you elaborate on that? You're just saying that a certain, uh, can't miss a certain number of meetings kind of thing? Or? Yeah, that there's an ex reasonable expectation for attendance mm -hmm. and I don't know if it's just I mean I don't know if other communities rules and regulations have this for their license commissions I know boards I've served on and that's a different thing but we've had it so that the expectations are clear to new members that attendance is important um, and I think that we've you know, we can, it's the size of the commission allows us to be nimble, which is nice. There's just three of us, but at the same time, in the absence of one, two people shoulder a lot of the decision-making. And I don't know that that's the healthiest thing for a commission to be doing. I think more voices are better for the, some of the decisions that we have to make. Yeah. But I don't know what it would look like. Yeah. And it's interesting because actually today I almost had like, like two hours before the meeting, I was almost in a position where I had to say I can't attend the meeting, but uh, I'm it, glad that that didn't happen. And, yeah. it, and that's going to happen. And yeah. there, sh there should be room for that to happen. You know, it should, there shouldn't be like some sort of steadfast rule, but I think, I think an expectation is reasonable. Right, right. Yeah. Can I ask, I don't know if it's within my rights to ask, was this a last minute with Brian? Because I was thinking, oh gosh, it's a good thing I didn't have to do what I thought I had to do. Um, and I wouldn't have known that it would have been, it would have canceled the meeting. Um, um, yeah, it was a 204 decision. Oh, that's funny. Cause that was around the time when I thought, oh no, I might not be able to <laughs> make this meeting. <laughs> so, okay. Well, I'm glad it worked out. Um, but yeah, no, I uh, agree with you. I mean, I think that because I know that, yes, certainly during the pandemic and all the extra meetings that we had, um, it was the two of us a lot. So it would be um, nice to have some something in there. Um, 
I, I am happy to do some research for other communities and, and see what they're, if they have an attendance policy. And I will also um, work with attorney Seawald to draft something for your review for next meeting. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that'd be great. Um, Annie, do you have any new, new business? Um, no, I guess maybe I just want to let you know that I did get a noise complaint about the Patria um, entertainment, um, a very upset complaint. It, um, they also talked to city council. They were trying to get in touch with their counselor. Um, yeah, so um, I don't want to put words in her mouth, but she claimed that it's unbearable to, to live there. Um, I reminded her that it's only on Saturdays through November and then it expires. Um, and I also let her know that the best way to address this is to come to the License Commission for public comment and gave mm -hmm. her the information. Um, she was not here today. Um, Do you yeah. know the general vicinity that she lives in? I'm just curious which way the sound is going in that. She lives in the um, Hampton Court Apartments. Okay. Yeah, right across. Yeah. Um, and Patria is aware. Did she talk also to the owners of Patria? Oh, I can't remember specifically. I be believe she tried and didn't get anywhere. Um, like wasn't able to reach them, get anywhere? Uh, I don't want to say any, I don't remember. It is was early last week and it was a very um, distressed phone call and there were also other issues um, that she addressed with me, not not relating to the license commission. Okay. Um, so it was kind of it was it was um, a long, heated. Well, not heated, but she was very upset Has, about this and a lot of other things. Is Patria aware of the complaint? I I, I don't know. Okay. Okay. Is are we or we slash you under any obligation when the a complaint comes to you to notify the business that there's been a complaint um if the commission wants to act on it then then that would that would trigger a notification to the restaurant holder but we're not under any yeah. obligation to just let them know but i guess you advise and it sounds like you don't know and it sounds like there was a lot going on in this phone call but i'm just wondering if the standard practice is for you to advise the people to take it up directly with the business or is that just so that, you know, it's, it's just awkward and unfair in a way when we get in that situation, if we get in that situation where they're suddenly being called before the license commission and they are unaware that a complaint has been filed. I'm just wondering how we can. Yeah, I mean, I would, I would hope that individuals that have a complaint would go directly to the source. That's not always the case. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I can't, I'm sorry, it was early last week, it was um, stressful conversation. I don't recall if she went over there or if I told her to do so. I know I told her to come to the License Commission meeting, um, but the rest I cannot remember. I have her information, I can always get back in touch with her. Um, or if you, if you would like me to, I can reach out to Patria. I think that, I think, um, I mean, it's great if people go to the source themselves to let the complaints be known, but I can also see how some people might not, it might be easier for them to pick up a phone and call you. So, so I'm wondering if Patria is aware of this at all. And based on, you know, we're, we're trying to be more um, mindful of these, new outdoor entertainment licenses that we're issuing and getting complaints on them and stuff. So I think it would be helpful if you let Patria know, like just okay. a heads up so that they can attempt to make some sort of change this weekend. Yeah. And I'm curious what she's saying. It was one time or every time. And I don't know how many times they've, they've had this outdoor. I think it was only one time that they've had it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I don't know what happened last weekend and was it was it a rain out last weekend i'm trying with all the rain it could be that it wasn't even possible 
to have anything. Um, the question, so. Helen, um, at, in your um, role as Tuesday Market Manager, do you hear music? There is music. I've actually been meaning to talk to you about that, ask about that. Well, because I, I yeah. spoke with someone in the city who said that they walked by that area the other day and they heard music and she thought it was Patria. And I said, well, that can't be because it, it, their license is only for Saturday from 6 to 1 a.m. Yeah. Um, and she said it was a Tuesday. And I said, well, maybe it's the farmer's market. Yes, we do have music. Um, yeah, and typically like two, like it was two thirty to five thirty. Was that just yesterday? It was around um, yeah. at that time, so uh, I, that's what she must have been. So now, can I ask? Um, uh, was, was that a complaint, or she was just curious? No, she was. She was. Okay. Because I, when I said it was Saturday, Saturdays only, that's when she said, "Oh well, I heard music down there yesterday," and. Oh, and okay. then I said, "Well, I think that's the market." So, it is, yeah, it is. Yeah. Okay, so I just wanted to confirm. Yeah. Anything else? Um. No, and I will say that with that music, we <laughs> there's one fellow who's call who has my direct line so when it's too loud which has happened once we turn it down <laughs> so, that, so that's how that goes <laughs> Winston? i don't actually know his name he uh, works in a, a a building that backs on to armory street plaza is he an attorney he is i believe a psychiatrist or yes. psychologist yes that is him yep we've okay. we've yes yep okay it's nice that that worked out with some communication and cooperation, Helen. Right. Yes, the old um, market manager gave him, uh, transferred his number, my number to him. Anyway, we, we handed that off. So <laughs> as far as I know, that's the only complaint we've ever gotten. <laughs> okay. Any other new business? Not for me. I got nothing. Then I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, Do we need to roll for that? I, I don't remember. Uh, Helen and Helen? Yes. And Natasha? Yes.